Hey guys, it's Mrs. Kilburn from the School Counseling Office, and I'm here today to talk to you about the transition to distance learning that is coming this week. So, you might be wondering how you're going to be able to stay in touch with your school counselor over that time, and I have a few ways that we can stay connected that I'm going to talk to you about. So, first of all, I'm honestly pretty excited about this because it's going to allow me, we've been thinking creatively about ways to accomplish this well, and it's going to allow me, I think, to, in some ways, expand my availability for students and families, which is really cool. So, first of all, the, the time frame that I'll be available will be expanded. So, normally I am in the office from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., but during this distance learning period, I'm going to be extending my hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So you can reach out to me anytime during those, that, those hours. So parents, if you're working and afternoon, evening works better for you, that might be an advantage in this for sure because I would love to have parents sit in on conferences with students um, talking about scheduling and college and different things. I think it's great to work in partnership with families that way. So if you want to schedule a meeting with your student, with me, I'd be glad to do that. Um, there's a few ways that you can reach out to me. I'll, be, I'll still be sending out emails, so keep an eye on your email, please. Uh, announcements, videos, scholarship information, all sorts of really important things are gonna be coming to you from me via email. So check your email, I'll be checking mine regularly. Um, Phone. So I will not have access to my office phone from home, um, but you can reach me via cell phone. I'm going to put my cell phone number in this email. You can call or text that number anytime between those hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So if that's an easier way for you to reach out, by all means, feel free to do that anytime between those hours. Hangouts. So in Google, students, when you go log into your student Google account, on the left-hand column beneath the folders, you're gonna see a like Google Hangouts option. If you haven't used that before, it's like a quick instant messenger. So if you don't wanna send like a whole email and you just have a quick message to send me, like, are you available or something like that, you can just send me a Hangouts messenger and message and I will check that and reply back that way too. Uh, and then the last way is really exciting. So um, Google has a, an app extension called Meet, which is basically like FaceTime, where you can video conference. So this is gonna be just like coming into my office. We can connect virtually over that, uh, over Google Meet. And how that's gonna work is if you would like to set up an appointment, you're gonna send me a message. You can text, email, hangouts, whatever. Send me a message letting me know uh, that you would like to meet and what time works best for you. And when you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put you on my calendar and it's gonna send you a calendar invite. And then the calendar invite will have the link to our Google Meet virtual meeting. Or you can also schedule yourself on my calendar. If you look in any email that I've ever sent you beneath or in my signature line, there is an option to access my calendar. It's called Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. And you can schedule your own appointment on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and update my availability so that you can have access to my calendar and schedule your own meeting if, if you'd like to go ahead and get yourself on my calendar. If there is a conflict, I'll let you know and we will reschedule that, but that's just another way that you can do it. So email, call, hangouts, and Google Meet are gonna be the ways that we can stay in touch. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk to you guys about is staying emotionally healthy during social distancing. So there have been a lot of really great articles about this out there, and I'm gonna to talk to you about a few ways that I am helping my family stay healthy and the things that we're doing to prioritize emotional health during this period. So um, the first thing is that I wanna say is social distancing is not the same thing as social isolation. So we talked about just a minute ago about all of the different methods that you can use to reach me. The same applies to your friends and your family members. And it's gonna be really important that you make this a part of your daily routine to reach out to people and stay connected because that's gonna be a really 
powerful supportive factor during this time of social distancing. The regular social interactions that you have in school are going to be aren't going to be part of your daily routine for a while, but you can still reach out to people, let people know how you're feeling, have conversations, stay connected with people that are a positive influence to you, and that can be a really great supportive factor during this time. So um, another thing that I want to talk about is how our faith gives us a different perspective on this than the rest of the world. If you've been watching the media, I'm sure most of you have, there's been a lot of really negative and discouraging and sensationalized things that have been said about the impact of this on our society. And so it's important to stay in the loop. I encourage you guys to stay. There's been so many things that have been changing so fast that it's important to stay connected, but it's also important to limit the amount of exposure that we have to the media. So, but as we look at what people are saying about this and we take that into consideration, I think it's important to think about how our perspective is different. And one of the things that I have read recently, I'm going to share with you, um, this book called The Only Necessary Thing by Henry Nowen, there is a chapter on solitude, which is so timely right now, but there's a, a little passage that I'm going to read to you that I that really helped to shape my perspective on this. So it says, now, how do I deal with my aloneness? Many people deal with it through loneliness. That means you experience your aloneness as a wound, as something that hurts you, makes you miserable. It makes you cry out, is there anyone who can help me? Loneliness is one of the greatest sources of suffering today. It is the disease of our time. But as Christians, we are called to convert our loneliness into solitude. We are called to experience our aloneness, not as a wound, but as a gift, as God's gift, so that in our aloneness, we might discover how deeply we are loved by God. It is precisely where we are most alone, most unique, most ourselves, that God is closest to us. That is where we experience God as the divine, loving Father who knows us better than we know ourselves. So this passage truly shaped my perspective on solitude and I think in a timely way because I love to share that with people right now and I hope that's an encouragement to you as you do have time alone. It's a great opportunity for you to use that time to connect deeply and sincerely with God and to hear from Him. And sometimes the quiet is the best method of doing that because it just gives us more space and time to do that well and eliminate some of the distractions. But in order to eliminate those distractions, we have to tune them out a little bit too. So I think our faith... Um, should really shape our response to this. So in terms of embracing solitude and using it as a means of connecting well with God, but also in terms of remembering that this is an opportunity to pray for and care about others. So there are so many people who are potentially at higher risk in this situation and it's important to pray for those people. And just the act of social distancing in and of itself is an act of kindness. I read an email from UT that um, used that quote, and I think that's so true that we, this is not just about us. This is about the greater good of humanity and doing something that can be a protective factor for those who are most at risk. And so I think as Christians, we should be fully on board with that and really be praying for people who might be at greater risk or might be exposed to this uh, more readily. So definitely making that a priority is important. Um, limiting media exposure and distraction. So I talked a minute ago about media. It's important to stay in tune with what's going on because things are developing so quickly. But in our home, we put time restrictions on that. And when we're working, and when we're spending time together, we don't allow that to invade that time. We tune it out. So whether it's social media or news media or anything like that, I would encourage you to have some time that you tune that out and that you don't let that invade uh, your school studies or your connecting with other people and just have some, some time where you distance yourself from that too. So, all right. So the first thing 
was limiting media exposure. Second thing is viewing challenges as opportunities. So I talked about like how excited I am about distance learning and how that can create an opportunity for me to connect and to be more available with students and parents. Um, so I get to expand my availability. I get to master new skills professionally that will help me like working virtually. I get to restructure my schedule in a way that I feel is more productive and constructive and a greater benefit to students. So I'm really excited about those opportunities. It would be really easy though to say like, oh, I have to do distance learning. So rather than have to, I try to say the words get to. So I get to do those things. Uh, the third thing is to prioritize relationships. So we talked about how important relationships are right now, your relationship with God and your relationship with others. The fourth thing is to practice gratitude. So I personally am so grateful for technology right now. I'm grateful for the internet connection that we have. I'm thankful for all of the electronics we have in our home that allow us to stay connective and productive at, during this period. I'm thankful for the faculty and staff at CAK that's been pulling together so much over the past couple of weeks to make this happen, helping each other and encouraging each other and just getting to see the behind the scenes of that. Guys, I'm just gonna tell you, your teachers care about you so much. In all of the training sessions that we've done and all of the, the virtual learning that we've been doing about how to do this well, your teachers consistently have been thinking about how to make this doable for you and how to make it as smooth of a transition as possible and I think they're going to do a very good job of that. So I'm thankful for the faculty and staff. I'm thankful for students. I'm thankful that we have such competent, capable, and equipped students to be able to handle this transition well. I really believe in you guys and I think you're going to do a great job. So, um, and the fifth thing that I want to talk about is schedule and routines. So this is so important. Your schedule is going to change dramatically when we tr transition to distance learning. It's important to still maintain some sort of schedule for yourself to, to keep you emotionally healthy. So I would encourage you when you get up each morning to get dressed and ready, just like you would for a normal school day. We, in our home, we all get up and get dressed and follow our normal morning routine. And that studies have shown that that can help you to be more productive in your work from home. Also throughout the day, scheduling work time and um, fun time and connecting time and prayer time, having designated times for those things and keeping yourself on a routine can, can really be helpful in this situation and just creating a lot of stability. So whenever we are doing something new, it's important not to totally let go of the things that are familiar and comfortable, and routine is a big part of that. So I would encourage you to really consider having a written routine that you can follow. You can always give yourself grace and freedom to deviate from that, that you're not locking yourself in to following that routine precisely every day. We certainly don't in our home, but we have a schedule that we have been following to some extent and it's really helped to keep us focused and on task and and feeling some sense of normalcy in the midst of all of this so I hope that helps you too and I would be glad to share if you would like to see a sample schedule I'd be glad to send you ours so that you can take a look at that there's lots of good ones online that you can follow but I think it's important to have especially when it comes to schoolwork designated times to do that where other things are not intruding on that time like social media and news and everything so um so just to recap the the five things for emotional health during this time is limiting exposure to media viewing challenges as opportunities prioritizing relationships practicing gratitude and um having a schedule and a routine to follow so i hope that's helpful and certainly i'm Mrs. Stoffer and I are always available for you guys if you do have questions or you need support in that. We are here for you. We're gonna be sending out lots of other information to you to, for, for you guys to be thinking about. So I appreciate your time and I look forward to connecting with you in all these different ways soon. Hope you have a great day, thanks.